Dear students, welcome to Read Bed Prep Academy channel. Today in Kingdom Animalia part 2, we are going to talk about the non-chordates, otherwise called the invertebrata. In part 1, we are going to discuss about the phylum Porifera, phylum Nidaria, phylum Tinophora, phylum Platyhelminthus and phylum Ascalminthus. Phylum Porifera, these spore bearing animals are commonly called sponges. They are aquatic, mostly marine, asymmetrical and a few species live in fresh waters. They are primitive, multicellular, sessile animals with cellular level of organization in which the cells are loosely arranged. They are either radially symmetrical or asymmetrical animals. They possess a water transport system or canal system where the water enters through the small minute pores called the ostia lining the body wall through which the water enters into a central cavity called the spongoseal and goes out through the osculum. This water transport system is helpful in foot gathering, circulation, respiration and removal of waste. Here in this image you can see the entering of water through the dermal ostia, the quanoderm consisting of the quanocytes, mesenchyme, the pinacoderm, spongoseal through which the water enters and stored and quanocytes which is a layer forming the quanoderm, the dermal ostia and the osculum through which the water enters out after entering through the ostia. Quanocytes or collar cells are special flagellated cells lining the spongoseal and the canals. The body is supported by a skeleton made up of calcareous and siliceous spicules or spongin or both. Nutrition is holozoic and intracellular. In the right side image you can see the structure of the quanocytes on the amoebocyte. The quanocyte has the phagocytosis of foot particles. It has a collar through which the foot particles enter and get mixed with the mucus and it has a flagellum. In this image you can see the sponge skeleton. There are two types. The different sponges use one or both. Spongin which is tough flexible protein fibers or spicules which are hard calcium carbonate like in limestone teeth and bones or hard silicon dioxide like quartz and glass. Siliceous spicules of another type called the dermogospongiae. Below you can see the spongin and the calcareous spicules. All sponges are hermaphrodites that is the ova and the sperms are produced by the same individual. They also reproduce asexually by fragmentation or gemmule formation and sexually by the formation of gametes. Development is indirect with different types of larval stages such as parenchymula and amphiblastula. Here in this image you can see the sexual reproduction of sponges where the mature sponges produces the sperm cells and the sperm cells enter another sponge and the sperm cell fertilizes with the egg cells and the egg cells and the sperm cells fertilize and form the zygote and this zygote forms the dividing cells and the larva and the larva settles down gets attached to the surface and forms a new sponge. Examples of sponges porifera, cycon, cypha, spongilla, freshwater sponge, Euspongia, bath sponge, Euplectella, Venus flower basket. In the images you can see the Cycon, Hyalonema, Chalina and Euplectella. The underwater seabed is the new habitat where the discovery and development of marine pharmaceuticals are in peak. Anti-cancerous, anti-malarial drugs and other bioactive molecules have been isolated and tested successfully. Now let us move on to phylum Nidaria. It's a Greek word. Node means needle or sting cells. Nidarians were previously called cylinderata. They are aquatic, sessile or free swimming, solitary or colonial forms with radial symmetry. The name Nidaria is derived from nidocytes or nidoblasts with stinging cells or nematocysts on tentacles. Nidoblasts are used for anchorage, defense and to capture the prey. Nidarians are the first group of animals to exhibit tissue level of organization and are diploblastic. In the image below you can see the nematocyst capsule having the undischarged nematocyst and the nidocyl. In the right side you can see the nucleus operculum and the nematocyst is discharged which has bands and everted thread like structure. They have a central vascular cavity or cylinder on 
which serves both digestion and circulatory function with a single opening called mouth or hypostome, which serves the process of ingestion and ejection. Digestion is both extracellular and intracellular. The nervous system is primitive and is formed of diffused nerve net. Nidarians like corals have a skeleton made up of calcium carbonate. Nidarians exhibit two basic forms like the polyp and the medusa body. The polyp forms are sessile and cylindrical, example hydra, aramsia, whereas the medusa are umbrella shaped and free swimming. Here in this image, you can see on the left side the polyp form, which has a mouth and the tentacles leading into the cylinderon. It has an ectoderm. Inside is the endoderm. Between the ectoderm and the endoderm is the mesoglea. It has a reproductive tissue and a basal plate. You can see on the right side a small bud formed that is separated and results in asexual reproduction. On the right side, you can see the medusa, which has the ectoderm, the endoderm, the mesoglea, the reproductive tissues the mouth, the oral arm, the tentacles to the cylinderon. Nidarians, which exist in both forms, also exhibit alternation of generations in their life cycle. This is called metagenesis. The polyp represents the asexual generation and medusa represents the sexual generation. Polyps produce medusa asexually and medusa forms polyps sexually. Development is indirect and includes a free-living ciliated planular larva. Here you can see the life cycle of the nidarians where the polyp form is present on the left side with its mouth, tentacles, gastrovascular cavity, column and mesoglea which undergoes budding and strobulation results in the formation of the medusa forms which has the tentacles, mouth, the gastrovascular cavity and the mesoglea and they form the egg and the sperm which fuse together or fertilize together to form the zygote. The zygote develops and results in the formation of a ball of cells called the blastula which later develops into the larval type called the planula. Later it develops into a polyp form and settles down. Examples of nidarians, Physalia called the Portuguese man of war, Adamsia called the sea anemone, Penatula, sea pen, Meandrina, brain coral. The images you can see Adamsia, Penatula, Meandrina and Physalia. Now let us move on to the phylum Tinophora. It's a Greek word. Tinos means comb. Phoros means bearing. Tinophora are exclusively marine, biradially symmetrical, diploblastic animals with tissue level of organization. Though they are diploblastic, their mesoglea is different from that of Nidaria. It contains amebocytes and smooth muscle cells. They have eight external rows of ciliated comb plates which help in locomotion, hence commonly called comb jellies or sea walnuts. Bioluminescence, the ability of a living organism to emit light, is well marked in tinophores. In the image on the right side, you can see the tentacles, the ciliated comb plates, the aboral surface which is pear or walnut shaped body. They lack nematosis but possess special type of cells called the lasso cells or coloblast which help food capture. Digestion is both extracellular and intracellular. In the image you can see below on the left side the head, the granules, the spiral filament and the straight filament on which the spiral filament is present. It has sticky retractile tentacle used to catch prey. Coloblast discharge an adhesive thread which is sticky to touch. Some species lack tentacles and the body is studded with coloblast. Sexes are not separate, they are monoecious. They reproduce only by sexual means. Fertilization is external and development is indirect and includes a larval stage called the sidipit larva. Example, pleurobrachia. The life cycle of Tinophora you can see the feeding polyp which forms the mature colony which has the medusa head and the reproductive polyp which develops into the medusa. The male produces the sperm and the female produces the egg. They fertilize to form the zygote and they form a swimming larva and this swimming larva gets attached to the substrate and develops into a new colony by asexual budding. Examples you can see on the left side Tinoplana, on the right side, you can see Pleurobrachia. Now, let us move on to the phylum Platyhelminthes, otherwise called the flatworms. It's a Greek word. Platy means broad or flat. Helmin means worm. 
they have a dorsoventrally flattened body, hence called flatworms. These animals are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, acelomate with organ system level of organization. They show moderate cephalization and unidirectional movement. They are mostly endoparasites of animals including human beings. Hooks and suckers are present in the parasitic forms and serves as the organs of attachment. Their body is not segmented, but some exhibit pseudo-segmentation. Some of the parasitic flatworms absorb nutrients directly from the host through their body surface. Here you can see the image of Tinea, otherwise called the tapeworm. It has a head which has a rostellum having the hooks and the scolex has large number of suckers which are mostly four in number. They have a neck and near the neck the proglottids are immature and as it progresses the tapeworm has gravid proglottids which are mature. However, Flatworms like liver fluke have an incomplete digestive system. Specialized excretory cells called the flame cells help in osmotic regulation and excretion. On the right side, you can see the flatworm having a mouth which is surrounded by an anterior sucker, the pharynx, the esophagus, a posterior sucker is present. It has the intestines and the intestinal cecca, which is the digestive system of the liver fluke. In liver fluke, the excretion is carried out by flame cells. It has a longitudinal excretory canal. From it, a number of branches will arise. The fine branches end with flame cells. The longitudinal excretory canal opens at the posterior end through the excretory opening. On the right side image, you can see a flat worm, the liver fluke, which has a mouth, the oral sucker, the acetabulum, large number of flame cells, the capillaries ending in the flame cells. On the right side you can see the image of the flame cells, which has a nucleus, the basal granules, globules of excretion, vacuoles, pseudopodia, termination of capillaries, excretory ductule, large number of cilia cells in the lumen, which forms the main longitudinal excretory canal. You can see the excretory pore in the flat worm below. Sexes are not separate, they are monoecious. Fertilization is internal and development is through the larval stages like the miracidium, sporocyst, redia, circaria. Polyembryony is common in some flatworms like the liver flukes. Some members like planaria show high regeneration capacity. Here in this image you can see the life cycle of the flatworms where they are present in the adult host like the sheep and they pass the eggs in the feces which develops in the soil as the miracidium lava, they form the sporocyst, then the radial lava and the sarcarial lava and they insist in the herbarage. And these herbarage are consumed by the sheep which are ingested in the form of metasarcaria and these develop into an adult worm in the host. Examples, tinea solium called the tapeworm, fasciola hepatica called the liver fluke, schistosoma called the blood fluke. You can see in the images. The plain area on the left side, in the middle is the liver fluke, on the right side is the tinea called the tape worm. Now let us move on to phylum Ascalminthus, otherwise called the round worms. It's a Greek word. Ascus means cavity, helminth means worms. Previously called nematoda, this phylum is now named as Ascalminthus. The body of these worms is circular, round, in cross section and hence are called round worms. Below in the image you can see the round worm, a cross section showing a body covering that forms the ectoderm, a muscle layer forms the mesoderm, it has a digestive tract which forms the endoderm. In between the muscle layer, the mesoderm and the gastric cavity is the pseudocelome. They are free living or parasitic on aquatic and terrestrial plants and animals. They are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic and pseudocelomate animals with organ system level of organization. The body is unsegmented and covered by a transparent, tough and protective collagenous layer called cuticle. The alimentary canal is complete with a well-developed mouth, muscular pharynx and anus. Excretory system consists of the rennet glands. Sexes are separate and exhibit sexual dimorphism. Often, females are longer than the males. Fertilization is internal. Majority are oviparous, example ascaris. Few are ovoviviparous, example ucereria. Development may be direct or indirect. In the image on the right side, you can see 
the digestive system of the round worm it has a mouth the pharynx the intestine ending in the anus in this image you can see the male and the female worm of ascaris the worms have the pharynx commonly the nerve rings the excretory system the intestines the ovary in the female uterus in the female vulva in the female the intestine which is common to both the worms and the anus is common in the male worm you can see instead of the ovary there is the testis the sperm duct and the copulatory spicule examples ascaris lumbricoid is called the round worm entrobius vermiculare is called the pin worm ucheria bancrofti called the filarial worm ankylostoma duodenal called the hook worm in the images below you can see on the left side the ascaris in the middle you can see the filarial worm called the ucheria and the right side you can see the hook worm called ankylostoma duodenal so today in kingdom animalia part 2 we discussed about the non chordates part 1 in which we talked about phylum porifera phylum nidaria phylum tinophora phylum platyhelminthes and phylum ascelminthes so thank you kindly subscribe like share and comment to channel read med prep academy kindly register for ug and pg neat tab mcqs in a website www.readmedprepacademy.com our facebook id is read med prep academy our email is read med prep academy at gmail.com our instagram is read med prep academy to join read med prep academy kindly whatsapp the number given below if you have any doubts regarding the lecture kindly post your questions we will reply with appropriate answers thank you very much